Hello everybody and welcome back aboard the hype train. I of course am Sir Beardian and uh, since people have asked, today's menu is salmon. Let's get stuck into it. We're going to start off with one of the more lengthy and more interesting changes that tie into diplomacy, so to speak. Starting with electronic intelligence gathering. A new concept in C-Sharp Aurora is Illint, or Electronic Intelligence Gathering. This is performed by a new line of ship components, the Electronic Intelligence and Analysis Module. These start at Strength 5 and follow a similar strength progression to EM sensors. One of the prerequisites for each module is the corresponding EM sensor strength technology. The Illint modules are 10 hull size, require 15 crew, and cost 20 times their strength, uh, subject to change as a result of playtest. They have a secondary function as an EM sensor, although a dedicated EM sensor of the same size would be far more effective. Their primary function is to gather electronics and signals intelligence on alien populations and active sensors, and eventually ground forces. Increased strength through research on multiple modules can increase the range at which intelligence is gathered, but the base rate is fixed. Multiple ships cannot increase the intelligence gathered from a single source, although a single Elant module can gather intelligence from multiple sources. If the target can be detected by the Elant module's built-in EM sensors, intelligence can be gathered. The rate is one intelligence point per day, boosted by the intelligence bonus of the Elant ship commander. For populations, the intelligence is also multiplied by 100 minus population species xenophobia divided by 100. In other words, it is much harder to gain intelligence when population has high xenophobia. If the alien language is not translated, all intelligence is reduced by 80%. After all, you can't exactly understand them if you don't understand their language. Intelligence is gathered per population and per active sensor design. If multiple sensors of the same type are monitored, you only gain intelligence at the same rate as one sensor. Specific alien sensors will now be associated with specific alien classes. Alien active sensors will initially be displayed with just a strength and not a range or resolution. Once 100 intelligence points have been gathered for a particular design of active sensor, its range and resolution will be displayed. I'm honestly not entirely sure how you're supposed to figure out what resolution an alien sensor is. No, no, maybe it's got to do with the uh, gravity waves or something. I don't know. Note that in VB6, you only have an approximation of the alien sensor range. Uh, plan is to add active jammers and passive stealth capability, both of which will become more effective against alien sensors based on the intelligence gathered on those sensors, with no limits to intel points. Uh, there will be more details for this when the stealth jammer and stealth system rules get posted. I do not remember if these have been posted, but I suspect we will hopefully run into them before launch. Alien populations will initially be displayed as they are now, with EM and thermal signatures. Once 100 intelligence points have been gathered, the population size in millions and the number of installations will be displayed. Additional information becomes available at higher intelligence levels. At 200 points, the number of factories and mines, and whether a spaceport and or a cargo shuttle station are present. At 300 points, the number of refineries and maintenance facilities, and whether a refueling station and or an ordnance transfer station are present. At 500 points, the number of research facilities and ground force training facilities, and whether a naval headquarters and or a sector command are present. The intelligence points for a specific population will reduce at approximately 25% per year if ELINT monitoring ends. The information that was gained while intelligence points were at their highest point will remain, and is shown in red when viewing the alien population on the diplomacy window. Current information is shown in green. So you basically need to keep monitoring them permanently if you want more up-to-date information. And if you go away, your information is very potentially out of date. Any intelligence gathered on a population is also used at the racial level for the purposes of espionage. Each alien population intelligence points adds one alien race intelligence point. If the population is less than 100 million, the translation of population intelligence to race intelligence is modified by population in millions divided by 100. When 100 alien race intelligence points have accumulated, a check is made for any intelligence gained. This is the same check as in VB6 for espionage teams and can result in new technology, survey data, new system knowledge, or details of an enemy ship class. 
there will probably be information added for alien sensors, ground units, and populations to that list. As a result of these changes, espionage teams no longer exist. Well, to be honest, they were pretty useless anyway. The only time they ever served any use is when you were already had troops on the enemy planet and could actually set up a colony on the enemy planet and drop your uh, espionage teams on there. Which, granted, with teleporting teams and the fact that you can create an empty colony anywhere were ha was hardly difficult. It was very, very easy to send an intel team over there. And, of course, they kept dying, but whatever. A couple of design examples for the Elint module. So we have the Jamestown class intelligence vessel. And uh, we can see here uh, Elint module 2, sensitivity 16. Uh, detection strength 1, 1000 at 31.6 million kilometers. And a uh, Sputnik class spy satellite, 819 tons, sits in orbit, sensitivity 8. Related, we have new interrogation of survivors rules. In VB6 Aurora, you can gain espionage points from interrogating the survivors picked up from life pods. In, in C Sharp Aurora, the same principle applies, although they are now race intelligence points, and they're added to those gained via Elint. The rate at which race intelligence points are gathered from survey, the rate at which race intelligence points are gathered from survivors is crew divided by ten plus the cube of the rank number of any captured officer. So rank 3 will provide 27 points. So uh, definitely do not want to get your big admiral captured. This is more important than the same algorithm in VB6 because there are now potentially multiple officers per ship. However, unlike VB6, this point gain is reduced if the survivors are from a non-hostile power. The intelligence points gained from neutrals is halved, friendlies is reduced by 80%, and allied by 90%. This is to simulate that aggressive interrogation is unlikely to be used against survivors from a friendly power. As with other intelligence gains, there is a further 80% reduction if the alien language has not been translated. So if you want to be capturing survivors, you got to get that uh, language translated, and you really want to make sure that they're flagged as hostile. Now, I can't remember if I talked about this particular change, but it's short enough. Uh, there is a new bonus in C-Sharp for naval officers commanding fighters on ground support, search and destroy, and flak suppression missions. The two-hit chance is modified by the bonus. The bonus is also used for orbital bombardment support, explained in previous episodes, uh, with the tactical officer contributing 100 of his bonus and the ship commander contributing 50% of his bonus. So you want these for fighter commands, for, air, for support missions, and for ships uh, who are slated for orbital bombardment. Now, moving on to a little bit more civilian stuff, we have changes to civilian mining colonies. So, the VB6 civilian mining check. Uh, in VB6, a check is made each construction phase to see if new civilian mines are checked. The chance of this check is based on a random number of 1 million with a successful check equal to annual wealth or less. There must also be two populations for that race. So basically, it rolls between 1 and a million, and if that number is below your annual wealth, then you get, then it checks for CMCs. Uh, if a check takes place, the code orders all systems that contain a population of 10 million or more on a single body and then steps through them in descending order population. In each step, there is a 50% chance the system will be checked. Once the system is checked, no more will be checked in that phase. The code then searches for that system for bodies without a current population, less than 80 AU from the star, that have at least 15,000 tons of deranium or sorium and accessibility 0.7 or higher. The one with the highest combined amount of minerals of any type where accessibility is at least 0.5 accessibility is chosen. The above can lead to situations where good mining sites can be blocked by higher population systems with no good mining sites, and there are also some issues with potential locations. Therefore, C Sharp uses a different method. Each construction phase, if a race has at least two colonies with population or infrastructure, that race rolls a random number for 1 to 50,000. If that random number is less than annual wealth times construction phase seconds divided by year seconds, so the uh, construction phase length, uh, a check is made for a potential new civilian mining complex. For example, for a race with 20,000 annual wealth checking during a construction cycle that is exactly 5 days, the number needed to pass will be 274. So 20,000 times 432,000 
divided by 31.5 million, which is 0.55%. This is a lower chance for a check than in VB6 to account for the following changes. If that check is passed, a list is made of all suitable location for a civilian mining complex. A suitable location is a system body with at least 10,000 tons of duranium, so less required than uh, VB6, that has an accessibility of at least 0.7. Uh, interestingly enough, Sorium is not included in that check. That system body must be in a system with at least one population of 10 million and must be less than 80 AU from its parent star. If orbiting a non-primary star, the star must be within 80 AU of the primary or have a Lagrange point within 80 AU that can link to a Lagrange point within 80 AU of the primary. So basically travel time of 80 AU or less. Once all suitable locations are determined, each location is given a score based on the total amount of minerals with accessibility of 0.5 or higher. Geranium scores double. The new mining complex is created at the location with the highest score. Population is not a factor beyond the 10 million limit required for consideration of the parent system. For each existing civilian mining colony, a similar check is made in the construction phase to determine if an additional complex is added. For this check, the roll is 1 to 100,000. So, what does that boil down to? Well, it kind of boils down to the fact that with in VB6, a system with a huge population is going to be much more likely to be checked for a CMC. And if there are no good places for a CMC, like, for example, uh, if you have all your population in Seoul and you're trying to get out of Seoul, uh, Seoul is probably going to get all the checks. Um, and that means that if you've blocked and taken up all of the sites in Seoul, every time it tries to check Seoul and fails, it's not going to do anything with this CMC, right? Uh, it, so that means that Seoul is going to be blocking all the sites out in other systems. In C sharp, first of all, it's a lower threshold. So it's a random number between one and 50,000 instead of one to a million. Uh, so it's a lower threshold, but it's also a lower chance per construction cycle. Um, so you're going to start getting checks earlier, but you, the check chance is going to be lower. Uh, and the other key difference is that it makes a list of all suitable locations and it doesn't appear to be limited by system. So if you've blocked out all the, all the good locations and all the suitable locations in Seoul, then it doesn't matter. You're still going to get a CMC in another system because it's going to eliminate all the options in Seoul and it's going to go straight through to your most populated uh, systems or at least the most suitable locations outside of Seoul, right? Um, the other very interesting change is a Sorium is no longer a uh, primary material. So if there's a good Sorium deposit that has no Duranium there, then it's not going to get an option. So I'm not going to say that the amount of suitable locations has been halved, but it's almost been halved a little bit less than halved really because it does re because the threshold has again dropped from 17 to 10,000 but now the sorium is no longer enough to make it eligible on its own but it will it does mean that it will be going for duranium deposits over much more so than any other deposits because it does score double so large duranium deposits are going to get hit more often, uh, which means that uh, CMCs are going to be focusing a lot more on duranium than anything else. Uh, and they're not going to be focusing on sorium anymore. If they pick up other materials, well, that's just gravy. So I am very, very pleased with this check because um, in VB6, you didn't want CMCs because they're trash. But in C Sharp, it's not as big of a concern because you want your civilian economy to grow. You want your civilian economy to grow. So overall, this is a very, very good change. Good change. Um, the other thing interesting is that it does seem like CMC upgrades are checked separately. So we could have new colonies as well as upgrades being checked separately and being done at the same time. Whereas in VB6, um, if the it just upgrades the co the colony if it's picked rather than upgrading the colony anyway so 
you end up with just single a few column a few CMCs that are upgraded in VV6. Where in C sharp, you're going to end up with a lot of colonies. Plus, they're also going to be upgraded even as they get uh, more numerous. So overall, it's a very 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 good change. Okay, one last quick thing. Uh, because I don't believe that I have talked about it, and it is a very short one. Uh, Grand Force detection changes. In C Sharp, as in VV6, Grand Forces are treating as size 1 for the purposes of detection, so are best detected the resolution 1 sensors. However, for C Sharp, the Grand Forces signature is equal to the total signature of all Grand Formation elements on a planet divided by 100. The signature of each element is equal to unit size times unit number divided by fortification level times dominant terrain fortification modifier. In other words, well-fortified ground forces will have a smaller signature than those out in the open. So you won't always know if you face a smaller force or a very well-fortified larger force. And this does tend to uh, imply that fortifications definitely include uh, buried uh, bunkers and bases and not just ground level fortifications but also um, entrench not just not just entrenching and walls but also well underground and bunkers and things like that so much bigger fortifications so yeah all right that is it for today join me tomorrow where we will continue covering the changes for c sharp aurora every day this month until launch we only got a couple of days left about a third of march left so uh c sharp is not that far off down below you will find links to the official aurora discord reddit and forums we can do the discussion and the hype and i will see you next time